What'd you do? You spilt. <laughs> I don't think this was on my watch. Go get your dustpan. <laughs>
so he he comes home on the weekends if we need some extra extra help so we plan this field today is sunday we plan this field for when we knew we had him around he's going to be driving wagons i'm going to be driving the other set of wagons and we should be able to just convoy back and forth and uh and then the combine won't stop the buggy won't stop and we should be able to get this I think it's about a 68 acre field. I could be wrong on that, but we're hopefully uh, get that all done today. So I'm going to, we're all just gonna fuel up. I'm wearing my, this farm wife shirt. It says, hey y'all, because that's gonna be our next venture this week, perhaps because the weather's looking like we might be able to do it. Uh, driving my green tractor, wearing my green bandana, a day in the life of <laughs> driving wagon with me. As exciting as that is. My birthday lunch. <laughs> I made you muffins. It's my birthday. I made you muffins. Yummy. Okay, so because we're going quite a bit down the road, uh, we always take the header off. Sometimes if we're just going across the road or just like kitty corner from the farm, uh, we got big enough ditches we can get over for vehicles coming. So we don't. We sometimes are guilty of not taking it off. You should always take your header off. Um, but we just use common sense with that. Uh, but because we are going pretty far. Uh, we do have a, a header cart so that the header just comes on and off. You've seen some videos with Mark doing that. So I'm just going to drive the truck and get kind of lined up for him before he gets there. And then uh, probably leave it there so we always have a truck in case something ever goes wrong. Because we're far enough away from home. We're hoping to get that field done and then scoot actually just east of here. And finish the farm we started yesterday. So, And then after that there's I think only two farms left. drive so fast we all had our hazards on oh, a guy tried to pass us there was another guy there oh my goodness it's not even a main like it's not even a main road and people treat it like it's a major highway uh, anyways I guess that's I thought Sunday driving was supposed to be slow anyhow uh, I'm just waiting for Jack I'm not sure what he's doing if he's getting a snack or what but I wanted him to be first wagons but I'm a bit impatient and I might just take over. So yeah, we got our wagons here. Uh, he's got his hooked up. I guess I might as well go because he's taking forever. Maybe he's on the throne. Must be. This is the road that is just infamous for traffic. Uh, we have a main kind of highway right there that's running parallel to this one. So people take this as like the back road and they just fly. And I'm usually guilty of that too because I'm usually in a vehicle. Uh, but when you're in a tractor, you have a new respect for how fast people go and come right up to you. And oh my gosh! I'm anyway, around here now, Jeff. I am just waiting for Mark to get enough off the headland so I can get a wagon in line here. I'm not sure really where he wants them, so I'm gonna just ask him that. Are we filling on in the field or up on the lane here? Yeah, if you want to come off the road, you can put that set in the field if you want it. Okay, I'll wait for you to get a little more off, maybe. Along the road. Yeah. So there's a bit of logistics uh, when you're setting up a field because I never really know sometimes where he wants where he wants uh, wagons filled and to safely get in and out of fields. And I also have to worry about Jess and hydro wires. We got hydro wires here. So there's a little more to it. Uh, wagon driving because I was a buggy driver for so many years you have a newfound appreciation for 
uh, what you need to do as a wagon driver because you want the wagon set up really, really straight. If you get off, off kilter a little bit and the back end of one of the wagons is off of it, it's really hard with the, with the buggy when you're uh, even, especially if you're backing up to fill it. So uh, yeah, we're just pretty fussy on location of wagons. Uh, you gotta make sure there's no low hanging wires, uh, no trees, and until Jess is really, really comfortable with the buggy, which she's doing amazing actually for just her second year, you just have to make sure um, you make it as easy as possible and as safe as possible for us to pull them out and out of the fields without anything tipping. So that's the scoop. I can see now why Jack didn't want to be the first load because you got to do all the prep. So I'll show you what we do. We have to move. I have to, I just have to open up the pit here. These are just cow mats. It's to keep the rain out when we're not using it. So I'm going to just move those out of the way and then I got to turn on the generator. The generator runs all this where it's not actually hooked up to hydro. It's hooked up to power. It's hooked up to the generator, which runs it all, a diesel generator. And then I and then I have to get everything fired up and going. our little dryer room. It's where all the main controllers are. So I'm just going to fire up the generator here. Once those all turn yellow, it's running. There we go. Okay, we're going to run the pit. We're going to run the leg. And we're going to start it. Now we just take, uh, we always take a moisture, we take a moisture test off every load. Press go. Soft red wheat is what this stuff is. It'll get taken to a plant, I think in Ohio, it used to be Mr. Christie, I think it's called like Mondero or something, and it'll go for cookies and crackers. And then whatever it gets, I'm going to put on the spreadsheet here that we keep track of here. So we switched fields. This is Mark's grandma. Peggy's field. Today is 26th. Okay, so we're at 14.9. 383 is the test weight and 32.6 is the temperature.
So that's pretty much what I do every load. And I'll do that, I'll move that wagon ahead once this one's empty. And then repeat. <laughs> and we'll be doing that well until wheat's done. So our timing is perfect. I met Jack just at the corner, so he just filled up. Jess and Mark are just starting to fill up another load, so I'll have time to go take some footage of them. Um, and I also had time to run in the house and get some lunch slash snacks. Uh, we're not going to have a lot of time to, to eat or anything, so I just take mine to go. And I never have groceries when we end up having these big, big full days. Uh, but I scrounged the cupboards. I found some, ironically enough, gluten-free crackers. I have to have gluten-free in the cupboard because we do have a lot of gluten-free friends. Um, and then I have hummus! So I'm still supporting my chick chickpea farmers in the West and the States and my rice farmers. So that's good. What else do I have? Oh, and an apple. And my most favorite thing, we go through cases of this stuff. Sparkling water. Okay, we're nicely opened up this field, so we should be able to rip it off pretty quick now. I mean, as quick as a combine goes. Uh, some, of the, some of you are probably going to wonder what we do with the, all this straw we've got in a windrow. Uh, we actually sell most of our straw. Any straw we don't use, we don't bail. We're going to bail all the straw, and whatever we don't use for the sheep, we actually sell to our friends, and they buy it every year from us. But this year in particular, we had to drop a little bit more because unfortunately last week, uh, they had a pretty devastating fire that took out uh, all their straw and hay from this year and last year. It's pretty devastating. No one was hurt, thank God. Um, but just goes to show you that uh, this can be a very dangerous time of year with with any any sort of bailing and storage and all that stuff. And uh, and they were super careful. Uh, so we are dropping all our straw for them and for the sheep. That barn I was hoping to uh, clean all out and use for my rams uh, we're actually gonna fill that too with straw just so we have extra in case they need more and they of course they don't have storage so so uh, we had the extra room and unfortunately my dreams of a, it being a, a ram barn isn't gonna happen so anyway you do you make do with what you got for now and if plans could change then we'll change them but that's how it is this year wagon driver I am. That's how good. I hope I don't get fired. So I left the door open, which is wagon driver like 101. You don't 
leave the door open, so I must have been preoccupied. Anyways, uh, Jess got a lot of it cleaned up here, and that stuff has no stones in it, so I'm gonna dump the wagons, dump the telehandler, and then clean the rest of this up, and then get back to the field, but we just started our second field today. We're finishing off the field we started yesterday. I think there's 18 acres left there, and then if we get that done, we might even nose into another field, but we will see. Wow, that was really bad. I think we just finished our second field of the day, and it's 7.15. So I don't know if Mark is gonna quit for the night because it's his birthday, and I was gonna make him some steak. She's getting really good at this. I think I officially have lost my job. really hope I shut those doors. Now I'm really paranoid. Okay, we are done for the night. It is an early night for us. We have been late every single night, uh, so I'm not gonna lie. I'm happy it's Mark's birthday and we can actually just relax for a couple hours, have a beer and a glass of wine. I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna leave this set in the yard for just to fill up with the buggy when she gets back. I'm gonna run into the garden and pick some fresh potatoes for supper and put some steak on our smoker. We have a smoker, we've had one for a few years now. This is our Traeger. All hail the Traeger. It has saved all our meals. We'll just warm that up. Oops. Pulled up my steak at lunch. So we got some tenderloin here. So Mark's dad is amazing. He always gets either me or Mark or both of us meat. So he goes to Costco and gets a bunch of meat done. We are like long out of Belinda's meat. So, uh, so yeah, so that's awesome. And then he just, he gets like a big loin and then cuts it up and then uh, vacuum seals it into like pieces of four. So I'm gonna season this with salt and pepper. That's all we ever do, um, especially for steak. We just like the flavor of steak. We don't put a lot of stuff on it. And uh, I'm going to start my potatoes, like literally still in the dirt. <laughs> I'm gonna start them in the microwave for a little bit, just because uh, the smoker takes a bit to cook stuff. Uh, we like it to cook low and slow. Uh, so I'm gonna in the meantime get these ready and I made a pasta salad look at me all prepared But yeah, and I made muffins this morning <laughs> and they're almost gone because I have kids a lot of you guys always ask me like How do you cook? I'm like, I'm not a good cook, but that's uh, what we're gonna have tonight. We're gonna have some steak We're gonna have some homegrown potatoes and some pasta salad All right, we're all on the smoker. We're just gonna let her cook low No, <laughs> There's our supper. Oh yeah, you're so camera shy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. 